Now, I've been looking forward to this one. <laughs> My buddy Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is here, and look, this man is like a renaissance man, y'all. This man, he's like a golf champion in the NASCAR garage. He's like CrossFit world god. Like That's a little bit of a selling point, but I like it. Um, look, I got you back, dude. <laughs> Sounds your, like an I'm amazing your, I'm your point. hype man, dude. I'm your hype man. Uh, and a Cup Series driver. So uh, I want to start with uh, something I was just talking to Martin about, momentum. NASCAR has a lot of momentum right now that I haven't felt in a while. I want to know your perspective on the momentum. So... You know, obviously, I got into the sport 2008. Yeah, it, well, that's sort of when it actually and it, it was had peaked there. Yep. I mean, I remember going to Homestead Miami Speedway 2007 with Roush Fenway, and I was like, "Holy cow!" Like, I, I had no clue what I was getting into, and then obviously, I saw it kind of decline. And to your point, like right now. I feel like, I don't know what it felt like leading up to 2007 It was bananas, dude. The absolute pinnacle for me. Now, I'm old. You're, you're <laughs> not. I'm old. Remember, I was around before you got here. Right. Dude, from, from like 3, 4, 5, it was crazy. Yeah. Every racetrack was sold out to the gills, expanding the racetracks, adding seats, Network television numbers were crazy. Doing yeah. doing six, seven, eight. Like the rating was a six, seven, eight. I mean, stupid. Nuts. Nuts. So I like I said, I don't know what that was like, but like I feel that right now. I and too. I mean, heck, I was just out in the campgrounds, uh, you know, taking some Kroger swag out and some Wait. groceries, and like the fans are jacked and running through the infield in the mornings. Just about every, I don't, I haven't seen many empty camp spots. They drinking any cold beer out there? A little bit. Yeah. A little <laughs> we bit. We should have done the show out there. You should have. You should have. But no, like, and I was just, I did a, a, a Q&A yesterday and I told the fans, I'm like, dude, like, this is, this is awesome. It is awesome. And like, I feel, you know, when I went from the Nationwide Series to the Cup Series in 13, obviously super pumped, ready to go. Champion. Yeah, coming off the momentum from oh. from the champion, and right now, like I, I feel that right now, you know, for myself and my team, brand new car, I feel it for the sport, you know, I, I just, I'm ready to go. I'm glad that you are uh, corroborating and validating my sensation. Like I just drove in here for the first time today, right, and I know what this place feels like. I've said it multiple times as we've interviewed your peers today. I have covered it all now. And when I come to the Daytona 500, it feels like coming home. No doubt. And I w came through the turn four tunnel earlier and I drove down the back stretch over here and I'm like, dude, it's a fever pitch. It's this, shoulder to shoulder. Lid, lid's gonna blow off of this thing on <laughs> yeah. Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What's the best story, best thing you've witnessed in the infield? This'll be good. There's got to be something that sticks might, out. It might be uh, two people doing something they shouldn't be doing, at least in public. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, – so I um, – man, I don't know. I should have thought about this. I put uh, you on the spot. You did. But but you're running through. I mean, you're you're seeing it firsthand. You're getting, I think, a glimpse. Well, I've definitely ran through the infield and seen people See where it. they lay. Yeah. Okay. Any walks where they. Game? where they laid mm -hmm. the night before they're still laying <laughs> sure. there, uh, which is always classic, right? Hey. Um, you definitely see people stumbling back to their campgrounds. Yeah. No clue where they stayed. Have an idea. I saw but. some firewood out here that does not look like firewood you can just buy from Kroger. They chopped this stuff down. It still had leaves on it. And it, it just, how resourceful these fans are Still had is, leaves on it. Yeah. That's great. Uh, I mean, yeah, what's expensive these days? Got to go get it yourself. It, that's every, right. <laughs> everything's expensive. Yeah, I mean, got to go get it yourself. But, you know, to your point, like, things are expensive. People are still coming. Still I mean, they're coming. still coming out. It's opportunity it, cost. It's great. They it's great. want, like, especially after COVID, we are made to gather. 
We gather as people. We that's took it for we granted. Do we took mm. it for granted? No doubt. Concerts, sporting events. This thing is going to be crazy. Luke yeah. Combs. Luke Combs hits the first chord. He's got no. Like he did it last year. It's going. He's got no clue. Like it's, I, it's I mean, gonna it's going to be. He's going to feel like he's never played the 500 before. I feel like yep. uh, when he plays Sunday. So let's discuss this CrossFit deal. All right. I don't know if y'all don't follow Ricky on uh, on the social media. <laughs> I don't, you're doing these crazy workouts. Explain to me how you found the passion for CrossFit. Being in well, your have you met Rich Froning? No. So Rich Froning came to a Bristol race. Met him. I had dabbled in some CrossFit a little bit here and there just because I got tired of just doing the same old gym routine. And I love the competitiveness of it. Met Rich. You know, really kind of took off. He would send me workouts. He's the CrossFit god. Okay. You know, he's um, four or five time champion, single individual and teams. And so we became, you know, really good friends and he'd send me workouts. And then now I got a trainer who never really did CrossFit. He trained Casey Kane for nine years. And then when Casey retired, I was like, man, I kind of want a trainer. I, I feel like it would help me push to the next level on the fitness side. And, uh, and he liked the idea of CrossFit. Uh, and so we incorporate that into our workouts, but now he's got me running a lot more than I ever have. Uh, I just ran today and I'm at, I'll be, by the time Sunday comes, I'll be close to 30 something miles this week, uh, putting in, putting in time on the road. So you're going, uh, you're going to lean out lifting. like crazy. If you keep doing that, you're going to lean out a lot. I need to. I, I need remember to. his, I remember when he had Casey doing all that running. Yeah. Like crazy amounts of running. And Casey wasn't but 130 pounds anyway. Casey struggled to keep weight on. He could not and, do it. Uh, I have no problem eating and keeping weight <laughs> on. So <laughs> that part I got figured out. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's the fitness side. I mean, you see that down here in Daytona, the gym's been full. Yep. Uh, you know, obviously beginning of the year, everybody wants to get, get going. Get that momentum going, start the season. Up. You know, feel like you're putting in all the effort. But uh, now we got a good group, man. We got we got a lot of drivers that work out at my gym uh, there in North Carolina, and it's been uh, it's been really cool to to see people come in that really hadn't pushed yourself working out, and then you know help them go to the next level. What as are well. some names? Uh, Cole Cusser, Todd Gilliland, uh, Riley Herps. Guys that got a future. Blaine Perkins in the truck series. Jesse Little comes. Got some IMSA guys. Uh, you know, so we're Brandon Brown's coming. We just trying to build up the uh, the camaraderie there. It's pretty fun working out with with other drivers because you definitely push a little harder sure. than than you do by yourself. Back to Days of Thunder. That's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask you. Out of Talladega Nights, Days of Thunder. What's your flick? Days of Thunder, like. Amen. Not even close. I think I've seen Talladega Nights once, okay. maybe twice. How many times have you seen Days of Thunder? 50? Oh, I've seen Days of Thunder long. Oh, uh, lot. Came out, what, 1991? 90, I think. 90, 91. And uh, it just doesn't get old. Oh. No. Like, it does not Play it get on old. a loop. It's on TBS at 2.30 in the morning when I come in after six or eight cocktails. And I'm you'll watching watch it the whole until thing. it's over. Yeah. yeah. And I don't do that with movies. Like, I'll watch a movie and I'm – done with it like i don't i don't re-watch movies i don't watch a ton of movies anyway Me but either. days of thunder comes on definitely watch it. so if you're not a movie guy what is your favorite movie you're like you're a little like me i know i, I got a feeling when i tell you my favorite movie you're gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna so one of my favorite movies and i don't know why i just has always i guess this is another one that i will watch shooter I don't know if Shooter. I've seen Shooter. With Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, I haven't that's, seen it. That, what? That is a repeatable movie. I mean, it's no so doubt. good. Okay, yeah. it's on the it'll, So there's on a Shooter it. on USA Network. Spoiler alert, There, there's a Shooter in the film. Yeah. There is a Shooter in the film. Yeah. Uh, but every time I watch it, I want to go get some long guns, because like, he could shoot something from... I mean, he could hit something in Port Orange from here. Yeah. Like... This isn't about Chris Kyle, is it? No. no. That that's, was American Sniper. That's American Sniper. Sniper. Right. I bet this got Chris Kyle going. Like, you I think so? I don't know. I'm telling you, shooter Mark Wahlberg. Okay, watched. I'm in. I'll He'd watch be like, it. He'd Marky be like, Mark. It's like trying to figure out the wind. Tombstone. Dial him in. Tombstone. Okay, I could see that. Greatest movie ever. It's Greatest got movie of all time. You could want. It's got it all. 
It's got booze. It's got guns. It's got conflict. Lots of conflict. Mm -hmm. Everything you want, man. It's got. I mean, all right. Wide Earp. Got to go, shooter. Okay, I'll watch it. Who's, you ever seen Hell or High Water? No. That's your homework. I'll do it. It's your homework. And I'll report back. You need to report back. <laughs> He's never going to watch it again. I need yeah. a full report. Full report. All right. Hell or High Water. I mean, Good. hey, I might need something to do tonight. Yeah, there you go. Who was your most intense rivalry with on the golf course? Imagine there's tears to these drivers, but it has to get kind of competitive out there. Denny Hamlin and I Definitely battle. DH. We're both left-handed. Uh, we both, it's, I mean, it's, it's in our spirit. We both rise to the occasion. Uh, you know, whether I have a better handicap than he does at the time or, you know, or vice versa, we always play normally straight up and we both just play 10 times better against when we're playing other. against each other in the same, like, foursome. Were you uh, with him when he hit the albatross? I was not. That blew my mind. That's spectacular. That is hard as hell to do. Yeah. Uh, I've I have never been close to an albatross. Oh. Um, Did someone witness it? Like, yeah, there the was, whole world. There, yeah, it was on yeah. video. They, okay. they actually captured it. So it's been corroborated. We like golf. We don't play golf by ourselves. But. Yeah. Uh, so there are going to be people who don't know about the golf guys. These clowns have an entire golf league. So Denny and I were at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We were testing. Lunch break goes. We're sitting there eating. We're like, man, let's let's put a group together. We always play golf together. Let's 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 make it legit. Entry fee, trophies, point system. Points, beer. Points. Yes, beer. We we got logos. Somebody's gotta be the beer drinker. We got logos, we got we got everything. And so it started out that way. Then we started getting sponsors for it. Then our group, we're at 24. Jump the shark. We got 24 people now. What's the league called? Golf guys. Golf guys. Just tour. golf guys. The most frustrated amateurs on tour. Okay. <laughs> and we've got handicaps from 24s to plus threes. And we all battle it out, make every putt, no give me's. I love that. That's how it should be. That's yes. exactly how it should Gotta be. Got to hear the hole, the, the ball hit the bottom of you the hole. You ever hit a hole in one? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got buddies that are really, really good at golf that have never, never made a hole it. in one. I've got one buddy that's had 12. 12? And 12. like six on par four. Does he play every single day of his life? No, but he used to. Did you see what happened at the 16th at the Waste Management? Dude. That's bucket list. I, that was I a party, never huh? No, I've never been to that so tournament. So I, I told uh, my agent, Josh Jones, that I want to play in the Pro-Am. So I want to play in the pro Next year, I'll play Pro-Am. And you come. I'll be there. Hanging out at the 16th is unbelievable. So we, you've been in the crowd? You've yes, been in the stadium, yes, as it were? Yes. And it is unreal. Describe it. It is. Frat party? So, I mean, I would take college frat parties, infield at Dega. Awesome. Mm. Uh trying to think of what I mean you could just keep on and on about the atmosphere super intense and I mean these guys are hitting shots right and the expectations go up I feel like throughout the weekend hit the green everybody cheers early in the week and then as the week goes if you're not within eight feet Boo. they're booing yeah. you, right <laughs> so did you see Michael Phelps wore his whoop for uh, Wednesday Pro-Am? No. So Michael Phelps, obviously one of the greatest athletes. I feel like he could regulate his heart rate pretty good. He hit 152 before he hit his tee shot at 16. I believe it. I mean, the nerves I believe it. have to be – I want to experience that. So I had an idea, wow. you know, covering the Masters every year for ESPN, I had an idea that I wanted to put – there's something called Catapult. Are you familiar with Catapult? All the college football, big power five programs, it's this little sensor they put in the shoulder pad, and it gives you every single aspect of body telemetry you could imagine. Really? Load, yeah. impact, speed, wow. all of it. All GPS driven. And I wanted to put a Catapult on Tony Finau. Because yeah. have you been to Augusta? Yeah. 
It's a lot of walking. A lot of walking, and it is a lot of undulation is the word yes. they use. Yes. A lot of damn hills. No doubt. I would love to see what they burnt, how far they walked, the heart rate mon or heart rate differences. So the caddies is what I feel like is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, Carried they put in, in a ton of work. Yeah, they and, and they're getting down there days before. And they're oh, they're putting in. loops in. They're yeah. they're they're out walking whether they're golfers practicing or not. They're out there making laps and double checking everything. It's it's crazy. Uh, all right, we'll get you out of here. I want to know what you're expecting on Sunday in terms of how the race will unfold, what the racing looks like. I mean, it's going to be Daytona. We know that what's coming. It's typical Daytona. I, I think you saw a little bit of conservative in the clash. You know, with, I mean, not the clash, the, the duels. Uh, the duel won, obviously, got single foul pretty quick. I felt like a lot of the speedway racers were in duel two. And well, y'all got to save cars, too. Like, yeah. there so that a was lot in everybody's cars. mind. But it comes down to the 500. Nobody's thinking, man, I hope I have this car for yeah, another, way, buddy. another race, right? Save this. We're there for the Harley J. Earl Trophy. I and hope that's I what have. we want, right? Yes. You want to be in Victory Lane. That's all that matters. And so. You are going to race. It's going to be, like you said, typical Daytona, I think. Now now that we are, everybody has gotten there with their cars, uh, except for one, um, we are side by side to start. We all get in a comfortable position. Like, I start 18th. I don't want to be 18th. Right. I want to get to the top 10 somewhere. And then, selfishly, I don't care if it gets single file if I'm in the top 10, right? But you have to be – the make or break is going to be pit stops. You saw it last night. You have to get on and off pit road clean with a group of people. Yep. You can't do it by yourself, and you can't have two cars. So that will be the make or break. You'll see, I think you could see a lot of people go a lap down if they don't do it right. And that's nerve-wracking knowing that you got to get off of you know, running 200 miles an hour pit road speed your pit crew has got to do their job then you got to get back out on the track with a solid group of people we pitted from the lead last night you know second and we had a couple little hiccups and i didn't i didn't keep up with them leaving and that took me out of contention to win the race it's gonna be fun great momentum in the sport great young stars in the sport uh i can't wait to see how this unfolds i appreciate you i appreciate your friendship and um, we got to go play golf. Thanks sometime. for letting me uh, come back on since I uh, bailed on you. It happens. On the lake. <laughs> it happens, bro. He had me do an 8 a.m. podcast. Yeah, it's not going to work out. Him and Marty. Ain't no McGee. way. McGee, oh. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, That's what, early. What, so uh, 4 o'clock is a much better time for 4 o'clock, much better. <laughs> hey, Thanks, I'd make bro. that now. I get up and work out in the mornings now. So I come running with you. Let's do it. No. All right. <laughs> See you.